As a lot of you know, I am known as one of the McGregor fanboys on YouTube, you know what I mean? I've stuck up for this guy a lot. Probably top three dream interviews on the podcast. Like, I really wanted to get this guy on one day, and I've, I've purposefully, and I'll admit this, avoided criticising him at some time in the hope that it wouldn't fuck it over for us in the future. Well, that ends today. <laughs> I'm about to kiss that interview goodbye because the guy's just indefensible at this point. Like, what the fuck can I say? Punching old men in pubs. I've tried defending him so many fucking times. You have inspired so many young kids to take up martial arts, to be a better person. When they've been getting bullied like you were bullied in Dublin, I'm going to look after myself. I'm going to make something of myself. And the performances that you gave across your career, the Chad Mendes fight, when you were injured, you were bruised, you were battered, you were down, but you weren't out and you got back up and you showed the heart of a lion. You showed that you were a fucking champion. And then you were surrounded by your family afterwards. What a moment. I bought into it. You are like me, a regular working class guy who just wanted to look after his family, give them a better life and prove all the haters wrong. And when after that, things got, you know, difficult as a fight, you lose in fights, you know, support you through it. These things are going to happen. It doesn't matter win or lose. We are there for the ride. And even then, when you didn't even want to fight anymore, we weren't even going to hardly see you unless you're flashing a Rolex on Instagram. I forgave you, fuck it, he won, he's got the money, go ahead. Then it got a bit harder, you know what I mean? There was some antics where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just not going to fucking say it out, I'm just going to leave it. Because not that bad. Cheating on his wife, it's a cunt move. It is a cunt move, but you know, many successful men have done it. And it is hard when you get that famous and you've got women throwing themselves at you. I've got no doubt about it. She's forgiven him. It's none of our business. Let them get on with it. Then the rape allegations. Again, you're surrounded by women. Cristiano Ronaldo, Chris Brown, fucking Neymar, they've all had it. Like, when you get that level of success and money and fame these sort of things come with it unfortunately and he's innocent until proven guilty i haven't said anything about these things because they're all private matters and we don't really know the full story but when it comes to this you're in a pub and you're offering a fucking shot to an old guy and he probably tells you a whiskey shit. You're a fucking professional fighter. You're a lethal weapon, a, a legend in MMA. There's a way of conducting yourself. There's a way of laughing things off. He's a little old man. You don't punch him in the fucking face. Everything that you started MMA for, to defend yourself, to defend your family, to be a better person, you've just shat all over it. And everyone who's defended you amongst all the criticism, all the bullshit you've done in the past, he's a cocky, arrogant wanker. No, no, it's just a character. He's actually a pretty good guy. You know, you, you don't understand. We all look like fucking idiots now, but you look like the biggest fucking idiot. I'm gutted that someone I looked up to would act in such a cunty way. Punching a little old man like that, I'm like, fuck me, man. What the fuck are you on, mate? Like, just be, let, let's be real, yeah? What are you on? What are you doing? You're a very hard man. No doubt about that. Punching a little old man like that in a pub proves nothing. And the saddest thing about it is, it's the first fucking fight you've won in three years. I run New York. I run this whole shit. And Mystic Mac predicts I'm gonna KO, KO you inside one round. Outstanding UFC debut for Conor McGregor. And an awesome reaction as he enjoys his first career win in the octagon. The proud Irishman Conor McGregor with the official decision, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Robert Sundell has called a stop to this contest at one minute, seven seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by Chief Hale, the notorious Conor McGregor. It was an unbelievable moment, and it's probably the most addictive feeling on planet Earth, you know what I mean? I just can't wait to get back in there. and I've been working hard since, since the injury, so. Well, the UFC is the premier organization, it's number one. 
there is no other organization where you can make a sustainable living yeah. uh, outside. So. Um, May Whoa. God have mercy on your soul. Whoa, and trust me on that. You, you little pull out merchant. No, sit down. Shut your mouth. Talk. We're gonna Shut talk. Shut your mouth. Okay. We don't want to talk. Okay. Mate. I when I slip your blood, I want to fight. When I you put in the performances, you put in the work, you put in the hours and the UFC brass take note and then and then you get the call up to the big show and then that's what happened to me and I took full advantage. I, I always believed in it, John always believed in me and now, 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 now we're en route, you know, but we are only, it, it is only the beginning, you know, two, 2013 was uh, insane, you know what I mean, what, what, what went on for me. And, this is my boxing ring. I am boxing! I own Rio de Janeiro. So for him to say he is the king and I am the joker, if this was a different time, I would invade his favela on horseback and kill anyone that was not fit to walk. But we are in a new time. Yeah, well, well I, I put the work in, you know, like, like I said before, no, no, no one works harder than me. My mind is on this 24-7, and my mind is on movement 24-7, and... Um, uh... Conor McGregor is going to blank Khabib when you guys meet each other. Stomp on his head as he's unconscious. There it is. Sing it to me. I want you to sing it to me. And I want you to dance for me. You sing it, you dance. Dance for me, boy. Mama, mama, mama. Shut your mouth, mate. You're a door box. I do smash me, talk. mate. I, smash I, I me. Don't wanna, I yeah, don't smash talk. me. I can smash you say me. send your lo send location. Here he is, right here in front of you. I'm right in front of you. Just for oh, here's my location, you little fool. Right in front of you. Do something about it. Do something about it. Yeah, you'll do nothing. But Ask these nuts. I don't have to do nothing for nobody. Your little fake belt over there should be a guy, a, a number 11 ranked uh, a real estate agent. Let's wrestle. Let's, let's wrestle. wrestle. let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. 6 October. Let's, let's wrestle. wrestle. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. <laughs> if you're us. <laughs> Connor, congrats on uh, Proper 12. Thank you, sir. Could we uh, get an official prediction on the fight? Uh, you cannot say salam alaikum and congrats about whiskey. Do something about it. What are you going to do about that? Is that the disrespect in you? Do something, then I just shut your mouth. Fucking fool you. Let's, uh, let's I just thank the Lord Jesus Christ that that man had not got the balls to step foot off, so, off that bus because trust me or that the bus door did not open because if that bus door had have opened this man would be dead right now he would be in a box and I would be in a cell and we would not have this great fight ahead of us He would do it in a heartbeat to take over. And he did not do nothing. And that's why he is a quivering coward. Because he showed fake respect out of fear. 
My name is Conor McGregor and I live in Lucan. I'm a professional MMA fighter with a record of four and one. Um, I'm an up-and-coming fighter and without a doubt you will see me on the UFC in the, in the near future, without a doubt. How's no one? How's no one, huh? Yeah, shut your mouth. Never speak about me, ever in your life. Watch yourself around me, because you'll be out here quick. I'm, I'm more annoyed that over the years a lot of people have said that this is the type of bloke he is and I've thought nah I've, I've watched so many interviews with him, he's documentary I've, I've consumed every bit of content that's come out about this guy and I really felt like you know you get a good idea of who someone is then And it's just ruined it. Because now, whenever someone says anything about McGregor, I can't say nothing now. I can't defend him. I can't say nothing. Because those actions are indefensible. And it just adds weight to every single thing anyone's ever said against him. And he, he's proven the haters right, unfortunately. I've been boxing pretty much all my life. I um, I started MMA around two or three years ago, and about two years ago, I'd say, and I instantly had a knack for it, and I, I really, really, really loved it. It's like an addiction for me. It's it's all I do. I train twice a day. It's all I think about. It's just it's, it's, I don't want to do anything else. It's as simple as that. It's either it's either all or nothing in the in the, the game I'm in. You you have to. If you're not if you're not training twice a day, if you're not dedicated, you're not going to go anywhere. So I felt I had enough talent, and enough dedication, and enough love for the sport that it was time to pack up my job and chase my dream. And that, that's what I'm doing. And that's that's what that, that's pretty much it. My dream is to be world champion, world lightweight champion in the UFC. Have more money than I know what to do with, and have a great life for my my kids, my grandkids. Everyone in my in my family, everyone that's that's come up with me, that's my dream. My dream is to be number one, pretty much. My goal is num number one MMA.